So last night, I went to the doctor and he had an emergency surgery and couldn't see me, so my appointment got pushed. I spoke with Amy, Parker and I decided we would stay here at our yeah, home in, in Montgomery, uh, instead of driving back and forth. And uh, so today's that middle, in-between day. And I decided, why not get out and see what downtown Montgomery looks like with this whole pandemic going on? There's probably nobody out. Let's, let's go check it out and maybe even tell a little bit of the history that took place here in Montgomery while we're at it. I will elaborate a little bit on the opening in case you missed yesterday's video the day before this video is when it started and then the day after i'm filming this video was the ending to that video so you kind of like even in the future a little bit because you got to see what happened to me tomorrow from right now yes yesterday in yesterday's video it's kind of interesting if you think about it, it was kind of it's really weird it's really messed up but it's all because he couldn't see me and i had to uh reschedule that appointment so we're we're back and forth so a lot of history took place here in my hometown of montgomery alabama alabama's 200 years old and it has seen a lot of stuff throughout the years i thought it'd be a good idea today to not only get out to see what it looks like because of this pandemic that's going on this plague that has affected every aspect of our lives i thought it would be a good idea not only check it out but i could tell a little bit of the history that took place here in montgomery alabama because there's a lot we're going to start off here at the riverfront as you can tell it is a very cloudy overcast day it rained a little bit earlier Nevertheless, it's not raining now and we are at the riverfront. Can we get down to the riverfront? Maybe I should have brought the Mavic with me. Maybe I could have gotten down to the riverfront with it a lot better. I was correct. It is closed off. However, the sign says closed due to flooding, which does happen quite regularly during big storms. As you can see, right there in front of us is the Harriet 2 riverboat. You can take a river boat cruise up and down the alabama river it is not sitting up any higher so there's not a threat of flooding right now so obviously it's closed due to the pandemic maybe the only sign that they had was a due to flooding for hundreds of years there's been a rumor that someone is buried on top of this building right here in front of me in that right there it's a long been a rumor that that is a casket who knows who knows could there be a human corpse inside of that there's not one on the other side of the building which i think fueled speculation but it could be true who knows it could be true if it is that's kind of crazy There's also a rumor that somebody mighty interesting is associated with this pole right here on the corner. I wonder who it could be. Ba bam. That's right. As I discussed before I went down to see the riverfront, today is very overcast, very cloudy. It's also very, very windy. The wind is blowing really hard. So hopefully you guys can hear me over the wind and it's not affecting the audio too much. Today I am filming on the Canon M50 that has the external mic with the wind muff on it to try to keep the wind down, but who knows? Uh oh. I guess that was right here next to the Hank Williams Museum. I've told the story of Hank Williams before. 
I will link it right up here. Most of you may know, some of you may not though. Hank Williams was from here in Montgomery. His final resting place is here in Montgomery. There's so much history here revolving around Hank Williams. And this corner is the infamous corner where Rosa Parks got on the bus. In fact, they have now erected a statue in her honor right here. The actual location where she refused to move to the back of the bus happened two blocks away from here. But this corner right here is where she got onto that bus. We are on what's called Dexter Avenue. If you look all the way at the other end of it there, clear on the other side, that is the Capitol building for the entire state of Alabama. But uh, man, there's just so much history here in Alabama. Not only did like the entire civil rights movement happen here, and in fact, they walked up Dexter Avenue, the exact direction I am walking now, headed up this way. Martin Luther King Jr. and that whole group of people who came from Selma, they marched right up the road, right here, the same way I'm going. But prior to that, way back during the Civil War, when the nation was split and you had the North and the South, the North, like where their president was located, was obviously in Washington, D.C. at the White House. But the South, who had elected Jefferson Davis to be their president, their White House was right here. In fact, it's just, it still stands. It's right around the corner over here. The first White House of the Confederate States of America. You can even still find pictures online to this day of Jefferson Davis parade reception walking right up Dexter Avenue, the same route Martin Luther King Jr. did many, many, many years later. His parade reception went walked right up to the front steps of the Capitol building the same building that sits there in front of us now. They walked right up to the steps and, and Jefferson Davis was inaugurated as the first president of the Confederate States of America. Like I said, whether you're into the Civil War and that point in history or whether you're into the Civil Rights Movement and that point of history, a lot of it happened right here in Montgomery, Alabama. It's crazy. You know, as you're younger, you don't think about those type of things. And I remember as I got older and I started learning and realizing that these things took place in my hometown, I was in shock. I was like, wow, I can't believe these things happened right here. As we walk, getting ever closer to the state of Alabama Capitol building you pass by this little number here on your right this is the church that Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. was a pastor at he held church services right here in this building in the shadows of the state of Alabama Capitol right out here in front of it have these footprints marked out in this crosswalk this is to signify the march from Selma to Montgomery here is a marble placard here in fact notating that pivotal moment of history the Selma to Montgomery voting rights march led by Martin Luther King jr. it ended at the foot of the Capitol steps in 1965 there standing on these exact steps Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. spoke to a group of 25,000 people off in the shadows on this side of the Alabama State Capitol building is exactly what I talked to you about a minute ago. This is the first White House of the Confederate States of America. It, it was home to the first president of the Confederate States, Jefferson Davis. This is the real deal. This is not a reconstruction. This house is, has been standing since the Civil War. 
Here's even a, the, here's the placard here, the first White House of the Confederacy, designated executive residence of Pref President Jefferson Davis and his family. There's a couple of things around the Capitol that I find to be interesting. So far on this little history lesson we've taken today, the rain has eluded us, thank goodness. This is our last stop before I'll head back to my vehicle, so as long as it holds out a few more minutes, we'll be okay. This is Dexter Avenue. We walked from the other end all the way up. This tree that you see right here on the left of this statue, it has some history. It's been to the moon. That's right. This is the moon tree. A lob lolly pine crown from seeds that journeyed to the moon on Apollo 14 in 1971. I just got to touch it because this tree has been somewhere that I can only dream about going to. And I do dream about it. Going all the way to the moon and back. One of the last pieces of history I'm going to talk about today, it's actually a Confederate monument sitting right out front of the Capitol here. Defic depicting the branches of the military during the Confederacy. But what's really cool about this statue, right here on the corner, this cornerstone, right here. This cornerstone was laid by Jefferson Davis himself, President of the Confederate States of America, April 29th, 1886. It wasn't just laid there by the president. That is a time capsule. There are items probably inside of a wooden box or something inside of that concrete that personally belonged to Jefferson Davis himself. One time there was a jacket and some paperwork and photos of him and his family. One of his personal Confederate flags. That's incredible. All of it was personally owned and used by Jefferson Davis. He personally put those items into a box or something and he personally buried them inside of that piece of concrete here on the corner and then he personally laid that concrete here at the bottom of this statue as a time capsule i think my father told me one time before the date in which uh jefferson davis wanted it to be opened it's like 2030 or something like that maybe but i find that to be really cool even if you're not a fan of you know the confederate states and uh that part of history Jefferson Davis is in the history books, no matter what. It was a big part of the Civil War. And then to just have those items that one day will be plucked out of that concrete that personally belonged to him, that's just, I just find that very interesting myself, so. Good morning, life. Good morning, sun. How are you? Skies above. Gee, it's great to be alive and love. That's going to do it for this episode today. Since my appointment got put off and I, and I was spending the entire day today here in Montgomery at, at our house, I thought this would be an interesting way to see what was going on here in Montgomery because of this entire ep pandemic thing. I, I've, I've been staying in op the whole time. I haven't really, I've been coming back and forth, but I haven't really been staying here. I've been just going right back down to op. Ooh, that's a strong breeze. I want to thank you all so much for watching i really really do appreciate it as always if you want to help support the channel check out these links down in the description box below not only is it much appreciated but it is a big help and it keeps us going it fuels our adventures as soon as this pandemic's over we're gonna spend a lot of time going places visiting places telling stories we've been cooped up inside way too long i'm ready to get out and tell the content away from home now i will see you again tomorrow and i hope you all have a great day please stay safe and stay healthy it's almost over
Good morning, good morning, son. How are you?